Hello, everyone. Welcome to the Packer Universe podcast. We're a Green Bay Packers fan podcast, bringing you topical and relevant Packers news. And of course, along with our most humble, subjective opinions. This is a special video, episode 273. If you're listening to this in podcast form, head over to our YouTube channel to check out the whole video. We're recording this on Wednesday, May 29th, 2024. We have a very special guest on the show tonight, our friend Joey Christopoulos. He's a Bears fan, and he brings a Bears fan's perspective. So join me, Ren, and Joey to find out where the Bears are at early in this 2024 season. Hello, everyone. Welcome back, Joey. We have a guest tonight. Uh, it's a pleasure to have you again. And a lot has changed since the last time we talked. I think it was uh, back in, on the 2nd of January. Uh, but we'll get into the Bears stuff real quick. But Joey, first, uh, how are you doing and what's been new with you? Uh, Tay and Ren, so good to see you guys. Happy summer. Uh, happy hope summer. Great eternal. to see you, Joey. <laughs> happy, happy summer. Um, uh, to catch everybody up, uh, since we last talked, I was living in the great state of California in Los Angeles. I have moved back, uh, to the Chicagoland area. Uh, I'm three weeks deep into it. So I'm ready for a Chicago summer. Um, <laughs> and, uh, I can't wait to be with you guys here today. It's, it's super exciting. Thanks for having me back. Yeah. We, I mean, we were, we've been looking forward to this a couple of weeks we, we got ghosted last week where we were just talking some Joey <laughs> smack. We're like, yep, yeah, yep. you know, we, we run a show here. It's all good. But, uh, run the tape. Bring it back. Yeah, run the tape. Right, right. <laughs> no, but uh, we, we we know that uh, before I let Tay get back into it, the Bears are uh, always the winners of the offseason. So we're really looking forward to hear hearing from you directly, you know, how 2024 may push the Bears finally in, in a new winning direction. So, Tay, with that, yeah. uh, you know, go back to well, your stuff. Well, my, my first question, Joey, was – how did you feel? I want to know how you felt when you heard that Justin Fields was going to be traded. Uh, like, was that always anticipated? What What happened when you actually saw the news come through that, they, that he was going to be traded to the Steelers? Well, Tay and Ren, let's first start off with uh, the first thing I did when I moved into my apartment was I put up my off-season championship belt um, so everyone <laughs> can see <laughs> that the Bears yes. once again – um, look, I mean, and, and, and we were the talk of the off season for so many reasons. And for that first reason, let's talk about Justin Fields. Yeah. Uh, you guys have had me on the show before. Um, for those that, had, that missed that episode, um, I was a supporter of Justin Fields because I'm a bears fan. Um, I wanted it to work out, but if you guys remember, I was always doing it as a caveat, if, if he can do this. And at times he has this and the awareness and seeing that second read, getting the ball out was always an issue with Justin Fields. Um, on Believe in Bears, uh, my former show with Bears, uh, former def Bears defensive end Corey Wooten, I had said back in October when the sky was falling that I thought Eberflus was going to get fired, and I thought that Justin Fields was going to get traded in the offseason. I had Atlanta pegged at that particular time. I remember. Once the yeah. Off yeah, once the offseason took place, uh, I will be honest, for the first couple of weeks, I did try and wrap my head around what this Bears team would look like if they had traded the number one pick kept Justin Fields and, and what that would look like for an infrastructure towards success for the next three to five years. Talking around to some people that I knew in the industry, um, some people that used to work for the Chicago Bears, it was quickly uh, a quickly realization of mine that the Chicago Bears were going to move on. So when he was traded to the Pittsburgh Steelers, uh, fait accompli, of course. <laughs> um, we knew that it was going to happen. Yeah, I'm not the person that's going to get all – um, hung up on what the draft compensation was. It was a six round pick that can possibly become a fourth. The writing was on the wall. And I don't think that the Chicago bears would have moved on from Justin Fields if they didn't have that number one pick and the right to pick Caleb Williams. And I started diving into the tape and, and Caleb Williams rookie contract, the things that he can do with the football, hopefully at the professional level. Um, it became very clear, very early on that Justin was moving on. Um, I'm, I'm married to a Steelers fan. So once again, Ooh. my, my former quarterback <laughs> is still in my life because <laughs> that's how, that's how they work, Joey. They, they never, they never leave you. They're just, they never, nope. you're stuck they with them never, regardless. It's a tiny town and yeah. <laughs> the quarterback, uh, that I had, uh, I had loyalty or support towards for the second time now 
is on the team of my wife's uh, my wife's dreams and hopes. So I'm rooting for Justin Fields, but uh, it was easy to turn the page. Um, it wasn't surprising that he got traded, and now Caleb Williams is the quarterback of the Chicago Bears. Let me ask you something about Ryan Poles. So a couple weeks ago, uh, I've got a quote here from Justin Fields. Uh, he says, this is a couple weeks ago, shout out to Poles. We communicated to him through my agent, and I told him where I wanted to be, and this was a place I wanted to be. So he honored that, and I appreciate him for that, and glad he was able to put me in a spot where I wanted to be at. So that kind of like triggered these thoughts. Like, is this a power move by polls to um, kind of like set the stage for this new team, this new era that the bears are in now? Like, does he want to set a precedent for this? Is he, or was that just him? Just, eh, I'm just a nice guy here. I'll, I'll do what you want. Or is this like, no, I want to set a new tone, new vibe for this team going forward. Um, I think you're hitting it right on the head in terms of a new slate, a blank page um, for the organization. Obviously, Justin Fields was inherited. Uh, Ryan Poles inherited Justin Fields. Um, mm -hmm. It wasn't his quarterback. It wasn't his choice. Um, you could see in the last two years, spe specifically that first year, the team that he put around Justin Fields wasn't screaming, I want to build around this guy. You know, Dante Pettis and, excuse me, EQ St. Brown weren't really screaming from the rooftops that I think that Justin Fields is my guy moving forward. So I do think there was a little bit of that going on where let's just clean the slate as quick as we possibly can and move forward. Another part about it, though, and this is a little bit of some Bears inside stuff, is this goes back all the way to the Roquan Smith situation mm. where Roquan Smith wanted to get paid. He wanted to get extended, and he was his own agent. He was speaking out in public about the Bears not being able to pay him. And I think you've seen Ryan Poles try and set a precedent across the NFL where there are a lot of narratives that the Bears at times can be a little bit on the cheap side. Um, in the past, the McCaskey family specifically, do they treat their players the right way? Do they have the right amenities to succeed? That's been a narrative that's been going on in Chicago for a while. So after the Roquan Smith situation, I don't think it hurt Ryan Poles at all to build a little equity across mm -hmm. the NFL by trying to accommodate players that honestly were Justin Fields kind of got into a rock and a hard place situation because they had that number one pick. So if Ryan Poles can create a little goodwill across the NFL and get a quarterback to a place that he wanted to go to, Justin Fields can then publicly say, Hey, Ryan Poles did me a solid. This is a win-win for the Chicago bears and Ryan Poles moving forward. You see when he makes trades for Montez sweat, Montez sweat, he immediately pays him. Jalen Johnson didn't franchise him, extended him. I think these are all things that hopefully open up um, a different narrative for the Chicago Bears in the next two, three years of players that want to come and play for our franchise. I think two great signings. Um, just on a, on that, a little bit of an anecdote. We we heard some leaks the last couple of weeks with regard to Justin, and one being the the Nick Bowles piece. Uh, what what did you take away when when you heard that, and how Justin was pretty much just kind of not willing to listen to you know, a veteran quarterback in the room and, and try to, you know, pick up on, you know, m maybe some good advice uh, in his time in Chicago. Well, Ren, it's a great question because it leads a little bit more into this clean slate mentality that Ryan Poles is trying to create. Because unfortunately, um, I had heard that news several weeks before um, from someone that had worked in the Bears organization very mm -hmm. high up during that time that Justin did bristle at the advice that Nick Foles was trying to impart upon him. Now, to be very fair, he got along great with Andy Dalton. Take that for what you will, because uh, Nick Foles has a ring on his finger. But it was unfortunate to hear at the time, and this was before he got <laughs> traded, um, that there was a bit of an issue in his rookie season. I also have some intel, too, as well, about how I'm not saying Mitch Trubisky would have been a franchise quarterback, but there were other people in the room at that time that kind of bailed on him after kind of – telling the front office that they could work with him, bailing on him in moments and not setting him up quite with the infrastructure for his optimum of success. I don't know what that ceiling would have been, but I don't think the Bears did him exactly the justice that maybe a young quarterback that didn't have a lot of career starts in college deserved. So to hear that about Justin too as well, it just speaks to, again, a disjointed vibe that Ryan Pace, Matt Nagy, that era specifically created, trying to fit square pegs into round holes. And I don't know what that says, honestly, about Justin, because I can't really speak to what Nick Foles was trying to impart upon him. 
Uh, I know that they were competing for jobs at the time. Uh, Justin obviously won out. Maybe Nick Foles felt that he still had some bullets in the chamber too as well because he had played the previous year. Mm -hmm. So again, really unfortunate. But turning the page, Ryan Poles now is at least creating an environment where the offensive coordinator, Shane Waldron, the quarterback's coach, the whole thing is fresh and new. There's nobody competing with Caleb Williams for the number one spot. He is the quarterback. He's going to be the quarterback from week one. And hopefully that works this time. Um, so it was unfortunate to hear that with Justin. And I'm really curious to see how it plays out with him and Russell Wilson in Pittsburgh. I, I really am. I think that's a fascinating, perhaps 500 team ish yeah. um, conversation to have, but Frankie, I think it'll be, it'll be fascinating nonetheless. Yeah. I think, it, I think it'll be very fascinating in Pittsburgh with that defense. Um, let's get to the fun stuff. I mean, when the bears are on the clock, Joey, <laughs> you know, with that first pick, the 2024 oh, NFL is. draft. Oh, he's, he's got, got it. it. Was there any trepidation? <laughs> You're like, are they not going to bear down and take the man? Or are, are you just like, you're just like waiting. It better be. We know it's got to be. It's got to be. It's got to be, right? You know, like <laughs> that was a long so, wait, too. So, so were you? <laughs> the was, was, was there any of that? You're like, well, they traded Justin. It's got, it's got him. They won't screw this. And suddenly it's Drake May or, or, you, you know, just, just a wrench in your, in your thought process. No, sign seal delivered. Um, I, I had heard that it was going to be Caleb. I think everybody knew that it was going to be Caleb. Uh, even in the days leading up to the draft, um, in the deep, deep recesses of Bears Twitter, um, you could see some of the comments that Caleb Williams was making, um, that this was more of a coronation of him being the number one pick than him being worried about whether he would be selected number one or not. Um, the number nine pick, um, not to jump off the answer of the question, the number nine pick was the one that was totally up in the air because for years and years, and maybe Packers fans can also um, uh, relate with this a little bit in the Aaron Rodgers era of, are we going to draft a wide receiver ever um, right. in the first round? We we went through that a little bit of, you know, we always have these guys pegged of our dream scenario of taking somebody. And then the Bears always go a different direction. And boy, it's such a different direction that it's Shane McClellan. Um, you know what I mean? Like it's yeah. so one, random. One so, play, one play, one play Shea, you know? one, one yeah. play Shea. I'll never <laughs> forget. That yeah. <laughs> That's, it gave us that one, that one shining moment um, in time. So the number nine pick was the one that was that, I mean, the, the Caleb thing was, it, it was so obvious that the number nine pick being Roman Dunze, um, that was the one that was so exciting, um, and tantalizing, and, and maybe not something that tips the skills for this coming year, but now you can really start to think about what the future can look like for the Chicago Bears in the next three to four years. And you said up in the air. I mean, you had to jump up in the air when they get Rome. I mean, that's oh, – yeah. And they didn't trade up either because I knew no, that was the just, other part too. No, he just falls. You know, you're, you're looking at, you know, obviously outside of Marvin Harrison Jr., the, the second best wide receiver in the draft and, and a supreme talent. And then you get to – pair him with with dj and obviously bringing keenan and um you know yeah what, what a nice foundation at receiver for you know a, a first year starting quarterback they're gonna have but i have to say joey the internet hype man the the, the champions of the off season um again as we talked my belt? about <laughs> uh, i've seen caleb in top five quarterback ratings uh, i've seen the bears as top five offense on these lists I've seen the Bears as top contenders in the NFC. I, I got it. I got And I see these things on, on the socials all the time the last few weeks. And I just chuckle because not a single game has been played. I mean, Caleb just had a practice where he, what, threw seven straight interceptions and got benched. Um, even Aaron Rodgers, who this guy patterns Erroneous. his game up, even patterns his game after Aaron Rodgers. Aaron Rodgers in his first, you know, first year as a starter after sitting for three years was six and 10. So should the bears fans maybe slow their roll a little bit? It's going to take a little bit of time. I would think. Uh, Ren, how dare you? They were throwing in shots. <laughs> how dare you? How dare you? No, look, so here's the, here's, here's the thing is that I am, I am, I am deeply excited um, for the Caleb, William, Caleb Williams era to begin. I wish they were kicking off for week one tomorrow. Of course uh, it's about to be June. Um, so a little bit of what I've been talking about a lot on my show is that, I mean, uh, if Caleb Williams is the, the prize prince, um, I don't want to get ahead of my skis. And Ren, you made such a great point about Aaron Rodgers, because if you look through the history of the NFL, 
I, I, I've been doing this on my show, so forgive me. I'm going to kind of throw some stuff out there at you about quarterbacks going through it for the first time. I don't care who you are. Um, you guys lived through it last year, and of course it turned around. But, you know, Jordan Love, 10 interceptions in seven games last year. Yep. C.J. Stroud. Oh, C.J. Stroud. If only can everyone beat C.J. Stroud. Lost his first two games as a pro last year. So imagine if the Bears go 0-2 next year with mm. Caleb Williams, what that's going to look like. He only threw for 23 touchdown passes in the regular season, which is the same amount that Mitch threw in 2018. Joe Burrow started his career 2-7-1 and one as a starter. Um he lost five of his first seven games. Trevor Lawrence, three and fourteen as a starter, only multi, only multiple touchdown games, only twice all last season through seventeen picks. Andrew Luck, look, he won eleven games with fifty four percent completion percentage, eighteen interceptions, seventy six passer rating. The Aaron Rodgers, six and ten, and then even Stafford in his rookie season, and only ten games through twenty picks. Now, all of these guys that I just mentioned are guys that were either highly anticipated coming out, number one picks. And some of those guys in there won Super Bowls and maybe are going on to have Hall of Fame careers. So I'm just mm -hmm. trying to caution Bears fans, and I think the NFC North in general, that this is not going to be a linear path. And we have to expect – I know we want the highs, but we got to expect some lows and some valleys too as well. Like I, I'm not on board thinking that Caleb Williams is going to come in and light the NFL on fire. The only person that has ever really done that has been Cam Newton – and you could probably say Patrick Mahomes. A lot of those other quarterbacks had a winning formula, but weren't blowing it up production wise. So look, I'm just, I'm expressing caution. I think this year is a year where the Chicago bears should be competitive in the NFC North. But again, the green Bay Packers, they're built to win right now. The Detroit lions, they're built to win right now, Minnesota. That's not going to be an easy matchup. And if you look at the bears schedule too, as well, they have a three game road, uh, a road swing in the second half of the year. Um, they also have a, a stretch where they play at home on like October 10th, but don't come home until November 11th because they're playing a home game in London. I think it's going to be a little Jekyll and Hyde with the Chicago Bears team this year. Um, I'm optimistic. I'm super excited to watch him play. But man, Ren, man, you nailed it. This doesn't always happen overnight. You saw it. Like, throw it back to you guys. You saw the struggles with Jordan Love. And a great, you walked out of the season with a playoff win, feeling great about yourselves, but this wasn't a week-to-week -week party that you were having with him. No. I don't think it's going to be a week-to-week -week party with Caleb Williams. I want Bears fans to know that. And obviously, for Packers fans, Vikings fans, and Lions fans, I know that the claws are going to come out in September when he mm. has a bad game. I'm just kind of preaching patience for this first year. Yeah, you've got to. You, you've got to. I mean, Packers fans know what it's like to – I mean, yes, have a great quarterback, but also watch a quarterback, you know, on the bench for a while. And and we all know Caleb's not going to sit on that bench. Um, what what do you have behind behind him? Is it Rippin? Is that the next guy in line? It would be Tyson Bajan. Tyson Bajan, who got so? he got four okay. he got four starts last year. He's in the That's system. Right. That's but right. But again, new offensive coordinator. You're right. Brett Rippin could easily uh, win the number two job in training camp. I know Ryan Tannehill's still on the street. Bears fans like to say, would you like to bring a veteran in? I don't think you do that at all. Um, if yeah. Caleb Williams gets injured, um, the season is sunk no matter how you slice it. Yeah. Um, yeah. So I, I, I think Brett Rippon and Tyson Bajan will be the backup options there. Like, Do you think there's at all any trepidation for, as a Bears fan that they're doing this wrong? I know he's the number one overall pick, and he's going to get – played that no one questions that but you think he should like sit for a little while like where do you stand on that because obviously up here in we do it a little bit area different. we do it yeah. different and and it's worked for us so i i look at teams like you guys and i i i worry for you look uh it's very fair i had a former director of player personnel josh lucas on the show about a month ago who was in the ryan pace era and he said on the show that he would sit caleb for year one um, and the track record is there. Look no further, uh, Bears fans, than you guys up north um, about having a guy sit. I mean, look, how many articles did I read in the first couple of years of Jordan Love not looking great at training camp? Mm -hmm. I don't know how we feel. You know, and, and look, the guy was able to figure it out through Matt LaFleur's system. Um, it takes some time. Um, Shane Waldron is a new offensive coordinator trying to implement his system with Caleb Williams. These things take time. Um, they've decided to not go that route. We've seen a lot of examples where quarterbacks, you know, take a couple lumps with the previous people that I've mentioned and come out the other end. 
Um, this is the decision that they've decided to make. I mean, my thing is that if you want to really look at something and ask a real question with the Chicago Bears is they again have continuously punted on offensive line. And I, 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 I get it. Braxton Jones is a solid piece left tackle. I really love Donald Wright on the other end um, for right tackle. But Nate Davis did not play well last year. They owe him a ton of money. Tevin Jenkins is a great left guard, but he can get hurt often. And then they're piecing together the center position with a rookie quarterback. That terrifies me. Um, and you guys up in Green Bay know what, it, what the center exchange and the quarterback relationship can be like um, and why it can be a benefit. Um, to a functional offense, especially early on in the season. So I think that's one of the main concerns for Bears fans that I don't, you know, we can talk about the wide receivers all we want. Um, but I think the offensive line at the end of the day, that's going to be the real key there. Um, and then obviously on the defensive side of the ball, we need we need another defensive end bookend. Um, we're going to be playing a lot of really good offensive lines this year. So the Chicago Bears on defense may be able to get home some weeks, might might not be able to get home other weeks. This all kind of plays into that Caleb Williams maturation. So my concern's a little bit more on the offensive line and can the offensive coordinator hit the ground running with a plan and a system, much like Matt LaFleur, who, uh, in my opinion, I felt like he had to change a few things mid-season and mm -hmm. make some adjustments um, with Jordan Love, and they worked, and then your quarterback flourished um, that's a time will tell with the Chicago Bears, but it is definitely a concern and something to watch as the season gets going. Yeah, I mean, you mentioned it. I mean, Jordan had we we were, we had uh, our friend Rob Domoski, who is the package beat writer for ESPN. He's great. I love and, him. And and Rob Rob's a great guy, and he's great to us. And literally, we were talking right after the Packers buy about you know should the Packers potentially consider drafting a quarterback high? We don't know where they're going to end up, and then. He ends up having, you know, one of the best second halves ever for a first year starter in the NFL. So things mm -hmm. can things can change. Things can take time. But yeah, just that's one thing we we want to preface for Bears fans uh, of the winners of the offseason is, hey, have fun with it. Enjoy it. But have a little patience. These things do take time. Yeah. Even even when somebody's been there a little while, it's going to take even even when they're a special talent like Caleb is. And we know he is. And we, we love the the workings of that young offense, you know, in Chicago, we think they have a lot of talent moving forward, but uh, the reality is these things do take time and, and people have to learn each other's, you know, nuances. And that's, that's what the game's all about. Uh, but let's talk about that draft. I mean, obviously it was Caleb, it was Rome. That's pretty easy. Uh, added uh, Kieran Omeg God, Gaji, is that it? The offensive tackle out of Yale. So you got a little little help there. You can you can uh, let me know. But then uh, <laughs> then then it's Omagaji. Omagaji. Oh, oh, Omagaji. Oh, yeah, oh, yeah. oh, there you go. There yeah. you go. Nice. I, I wish Taylor would have pronounced yeah. that one for us. No, so it would have been a little bit more that. fun. I should have made him. But uh, yeah, right. um, then there's the fourth round puncher. I know he's a fantastic talent, but fourth <laughs> round puncher, you got to talk to me about that one, Joey off season championship belt yeah, yeah. shines bright um look i here's what i will say um as a producer and also a host for beyond the big 10 um this past college football season obviously dialed in uh, the big 10 college football scene um incredible punter uh i mean honestly when you want to talk about Iowa and their defense and you want to talk about point total spreads and hitting the under at like 24.5 <laughs> on a Saturday with Iowa they, they are money. look he played a big part of that field position I mean he was on it but look here's the deal with punters is they are like relievers in baseball right I honestly I'm not really sure what you get from a, a punter on a year-to-year -year basis they just drafted a guy or they brought a guy in Trenton Gill two years ago. He was one of the worst punters in the NFL. I understand that they had to move on, but again, it's a bit of a revolving door. Um, if you're asking me taking him in the fourth round was a little uh, spicy, a little pricey. I'm going to agree with you on that. And you there. got five total picks, five, only five, five picks. we got a ton of picks next year um, to be very fair, but I I'm with you. We, we did not have a lot of capital. We did not have a lot of capital this year. Um, I'm hoping that it works out. Um, you know, it's a part of the game um, that I, that I believe in. I've, I've watched enough bears offenses pinned inside the 20 um, that have no chance of putting a drive together. So on the other side of the ball, if we can do that and give ourselves an opportunity, that's great. Um, but again, 
It's a bit of a swing. Um, yeah. It's a bit of a swing. Um, Valus Jones Jr. Uh, Ryan Poles, he's got to get it in with a big swing one uh, one every year. I'm not I'm not super on board <laughs> with it, but I will say he passes. He passed the eye test for me last year in college football. He, oh, he's, he's, a, he's, he's a good he's a, punter. He's a heck of a punter. But I, I appreciate you being a good sport with that. I had I had to bring it up. It was just, <laughs> I, mean, it was I can't. I'm going to defend that. There's no justification <laughs> there. There's, I mean, like, no. any, any offensive lineman, any offensive lineman would have been fine, right? Like you would have take, taken any depth there, right? Oh my God. Uh, it's like literally like, uh, it's like someone I'm sure to do a Packers parlance or something like that. It's like someone walking up and taking AJ Dillon in a fantasy draft in the third round, just cause right. they want a Packer, just cause they want a Packer on their team. <laughs> yeah. It doesn't make there sense. There are folks who will do that. Yeah. It's leading with the heart on that one. Um, I, I, I'm not a, not a huge fan with it. I do like uh, Austin Booker that they got a couple rounds later. Right. The, um, the hopefully, edge. Yeah, out of Kansas. Hopefully. Yeah. yeah. He can, hopefully he can be a rotation piece. Um, but again, this, this draft was about the front end and not the back end. And as a bears fan, I'm so excited about that because for so many years, we're always scratching our head about who we take in round one, round two, and then we're building up the, the round four, round five guys, uh, that sometimes hit and sometimes don't. So, um, yeah, I got, I got no, I got no rebuttal for that. Your honor. Um, right, but right. Hopefully... I'm, I'm, good, I'm good with Austin though. Austin Booker was, was a nice pick the edge out of Kansas. Yeah. I, I do like him. Uh, Joey, I have one more like big question for you. Um, yeah. So the the Packers last year went into the 2023 season uh, with a new era, right? And we our expectations lowered. We were like, whatever happens, happens. Let's just let's just do this. Let's see what happens with this. Um, you know, Jordan Love. We don't know. Question mark. Let's go. Um, so after the draft, you know, we, obviously we had a good season, right? And uh, it ended well. Didn't go so well for the first half, but then second half picked up and we went into the divisional round, uh, which was awesome. So we're like, oh, this is great. It's like playing with house money. We Ren and I used to say all the time in the latter half of the season. Um, but like even after the the draft, the 2024 draft here, um, the NFC North is kind of – for the lions to take, I think the Packers have a really good chance to compete with them, but uh, I'll bring up this graphic here. Uh, the odds to win the NFC North um, don't mm. look great for the bears. This is a, this is kind of like a, um, an average for each of the teams here. There, you know, betting can be all over the board, but this is generally where, where we're at right here. Um, so even after the draft, this is what it looks like. The bears aren't going to, probably win the NFC North. And I think most people know that, right? So my question for you is like, what result for the season, like would make you feel okay with this new era that the bears have with Caleb Williams, mm -hmm. with a couple, well, the, the, the revamped wide receiver room. Um, like, what does it look like to you? Is, is it a number of wins? Is it just, the look of the team um, is it level of play. Like what would make you feel good at the end of the season uh, about this bears team? Uh, just for starters, that bears number, I hate that number. It should be like plus 600 to even like get kind of a whiff That's at a, it. Plus I think it's a, I, I think it's a pretty favorable number to be honest. Yeah. It's a really favorable number. Um, and, 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 Look, not only did the Packers and Lions win playoff games, I think if I'm getting this correct, I think we're playing teams that accumulated six playoff wins last year um, alone. So you're asking a seven and 10 team with a rookie quarterback um, to make a significant jump. Look, it's possible. Um, but I, I look I, I, for me personally, I'm probably in the camp that you guys were in last year where it's got to be a feel thing for me. Yeah. Um, a disaster season and Caleb plays all the games would definitely be in the five to six win range. If they get to seven or eight, I guarantee you I can wrap my head around a bright future for the Chicago bears. Cause hopefully that means a couple of games slip through their fingers. Um, we had problems with the fourth quarter all last season. We blew 10 point leads um, like it was going out of style. So it's going to be, it's going to be a feel thing. And, I, and my hope is, you know, much to the chagrin of probably the last, uh, I don't know, seven or eight years of, of you guys up there in cheese land. I'm kind of hoping that the Packers bears games are a little bit more on the, the 30 to 27 range win or lose. Mm -hmm. 
more than the 28 to 13 um, that you guys have gotten used to um, over the last couple of years. I mean, I, I think competing against quality football teams, teams that are playoff caliber was something that the Chicago Bears struggled with last year. I think if we play better in those games, that's already an improvement over Justin Fields versus Caleb Williams. Um, I do want to see some more points on the board. I think a lot of people are getting wrapped up in the Chicago Bears defense. It was, watch out, it was top eight last six weeks of the season and turnovers and all that stuff. Um, turnovers are fickle. I'm not necessarily buying them as a dominant defense. But look, if I'm the Chicago Bears and I'm a Chicago Bears fan, if you're telling me that you can give me a defense that's in the 8 to 13 range, ranked in the NFL, and if you can give me an offense – that is in the middle of the pack, 15, 16, 17. That is something that the Chicago Bears haven't seen complimentary on both sides of the football in forever. We're always in the 20s in offense. I think in 2013 with Trestman, I think we were in the top five, but our defense was dead last in the league. We've never had two balanced sides of the football. So if you're telling me that you're giving me that, that we're competitive in games, Sure, maybe Caleb throws an interception in a fourth quarter. We lose a game here or there. Maybe they fall on tough times, you know, losing on the road. Maybe London is a great trip. I honestly can live with that and walk into the offseason thinking that our future is really bright. Um, again, I would love nine to ten wins, um, but it's going to be more. It's going to be definitely more of a feel thing for me because this year is a bit of the write off year, and then after that. Um, the clock really starts ticking on whether the Chicago Bears can become true competitors and not just the NFC North, um, but the NFC in general in the conference. And then, gentlemen, that makes the NFC North all of a sudden, if that happens, that turns us into quite the superpower, uh, quite oh, yeah. the powerhouse. Um, and, man, does it get really interesting. Um, in terms of those numbers, I don't really I, – I still don't really buy the Detroit Lions, to be honest with you. Um, mm -hmm. I understand the talent. I totally get it. Um, meathead of me, they're still the Detroit Lions. I think they're having their ninth annual event of trying to fix the defense um, <laughs> event. Oh, if we just get one more piece in the secondary in the back end, we'll be fine. I think they've been saying that for about nine years. Um, they're a bit of a prove it to me. Um, so I think this year will be really interesting and, and, and frisky, but I'm not going to. I'm not going to lose my mind if we're in third place in the NFC North or if we even finish slightly under 500 um, because I understand uh, that I'm in it for the marathon, gentlemen. I'm not in it yeah. for the sprint right now. Well, I mean, look, you got you got Caleb and Rome together, five-year contracts that are affordable to grow together, to connect together. That's the part you look forward to. If, if I'm a Bears fan, which I'm clearly not, Matt LaFleur 10, <laughs> Bears nothing. I mean, that's all I have to drop on social sometimes <laughs> just to get people to whoa slow down but, ah. you know, it, it is what it is but no i i think uh, the nfc north like you mentioned is yeah i think it's going to be one of the toughest divisions in football for, for the next uh, three to five years no doubt yeah I, I got one for you guys real quick can i throw one at you yeah, yeah. absolutely all right tay ren whoever wants to take it i want you guys to sell me on josh jacobs i want Ooh. you to tell me I know you're going to say he's 25. I want you to sell me on Josh Jacobs because I had the utmost respect for how hard Aaron Jones runs. Oh. And he just knew how to put the foot on a team's neck sometimes in that second half and feed him the rock. I'm not a big DeAndre Swift fan. I don't really like that signing either for the Bears. Yeah. Um, that worries me about the Chicago Bears. But sell me on Josh Jacobs. Why, why is this an improvement? Tay, you want to go first and I'll go well, second with my pieces? It's it's not a great answer for our Packer universe, but I, I think the Aaron Jones negotiations broke down and we mm -hmm. had to do something. And it was okay, let's get Josh Jacobs. Let's let's get on the phone with him. So they got on the phone with him. He's young. He, you know, you could argue that it wasn't a great, you know, Raiders team for him. Uh, bad offensive line, all that jazz. And, but what, what we saw of him was great. So let's bring him in. He's young and he's got some, you know, still got a uh, tread in the tire. Um, let's work with that. We think we have a better team around us, better offensive line, uh, better quarterback. Um, and who, I don't even think Dylan was maybe even on the radar at that point. I think maybe they were negotiating his contract at the time too. So he wasn't guaranteed. So it was like, ugh. I think that was what, 
the only the only selling I can do with that is I think they were like, oh crap, we don't have Jones anymore. He's he's breaking loose. We need to get someone else. Um, honestly, that's what I thought. I'm optimistic about about Josh. Um, I think he's going to run well for us. Um, he's just another, you know, running back. You can just place in the Packers backfield and he'll be fine. Um, you know, we're really excited for our rookie, uh, and we'll, we'll see what happens, happens with him. But, um, I think, you know, I don't know if Jacobs honestly is a long-term solution. I think um, we're, we're looking at him probably two, three years tops. Yeah. It's a, it's a great question, Joey. I mean, let's be honest. Aaron Jones was my favorite Packer over the last, I don't know, eight years. Mm-hmm. Um, you're right. I mean, when, when Aaron Jones was available, available and Mike McCarthy's big thing, we always I do a little Mike McCarthy availability is best ability. Um, <laughs> the, re, the reality is, unfortunately, too many soft tissue injuries started coming up with this guy. Um, just not available. And that is the best ability. Let's be honest. Josh Jacobs, um, he had a, had a little bit of an injury piece this year, but he's got 20 pounds on Aaron Jones. He can carry the workload a little bit more. He's versatile. He is a great teammate. Um, you talk to the guys in Las Vegas. I mean, there's nothing but high praise for the character of this guy. And, and same, same to be said for Aaron Jones. Um, I think it's just more about a guy that can be on the field more often. And over the last few years, Aaron Jones saw less and less of the field in the regular season. He, he and Rosenhaus played a little hardball uh, in the offseason. At one point, Good, Brian Goodgunst, as uh, some would say, uh, you know, basically said he'd be back. Um, and I think they played a game of chicken and they said, you know, F around and find out. And that was the end of that story. And, you know, it's unfortunate because that's one guy I thought was going to be back with the Packers. And you're right. I mean, when he's healthy and when he's right, he, he led to a lot of success late in the season for the Packers. He loves running all over those, those Cowboys. It is a beautiful thing to see. I'm sure you're not a Cowboys uh, fan either. And he just tears, tears through their hearts. It's fantastic to watch, but uh, you know, they, they add in that dynamic talent with Marshawn Lloyd, uh, out of USC. I think it's a good backfield. You know, you get Daniel Jeremiah's, you know, number one rated running back off the board. Um, I expect some great things. He's got a little ball control issue, but yeah, it's a rookie. You, you build with him, you get there. Uh, I like the backfield. I think, I think Josh is going to be a great teammate. Um, just, just not quite the same electric guy in the open field that, that Aaron was, but I think they can be just as effective uh, because he is effective as a, as a runner and a, as a pass catcher. So not not going to be my favorite to put it that way. Yeah, no, I like I'm I'm in the same boat with uh DeAndre Swift, uh but I mean DeAndre mm-hmm. Swift has had soft tissue uh you know issues um in the past. I, you know, I used to uh, write for a fantasy football website and then he was a walking questionable every single week, but he does bring that element of the pass catching and the running from the backfield um that hopefully is going to be a benefit for the Chicago Bears. Um yeah, look, I, I just I just have a lot of respect for Aaron Jones. Um and I'm really curious to see what that fit is like in Minnesota. Um, but yeah, no, I, I was just, I was curious about that. I mean, we'll, we'll see which Josh Jacobs shows up, the one that led the league in rushing or the one that was um, honestly a bit of a disappointment at times um, out West. And and funny enough, mm-hmm. um, he was the guy that they drafted in the Khalil Mack trade. So I mean, yeah. I always, I always got my eye on him for sure. <laughs> a- absolutely. I, I think nice. he's going to have success in Green Bay because I think LaFleur keeps it balanced. And again, especially mm-hmm. when they do have another guy that can do a lot of what he does as a rookie and they can they can balance that out. I think he'll be he'll be fine. But no, I mean, from from a personal point, I, I'd rather have Aaron. Yeah. Uh, Joey, what do you think of this picture? This is the <laughs> new stadium proposal by the Bears. Um, it's a bit of a, you know, title town throwback, if you ask me. But um I think when, when this news broke, Ren and I talked about it, and I think we generally thought it was a good idea. I mean, I don't know where you're going to park, but maybe you can chime in on that. But what do, what do you think of this? Like, is this is this awesome to you, or is this kind of like a patch? Do you wish it was Arlington Heights? <laughs> Gentlemen, I, yeah, I, it's like – it, it really deserves like its own show on Netflix, yeah, yeah. the politics uh, that are involved with this. So I'm just going to speak strictly on just the renderings and what my, my preference is. Um, I was yes. never a huge fan of Arlington Heights. I am a traditionalist that would hope that the Chicago bears would try and keep the bears on the lakefront. Having mm-hmm. said that 
um, that render that rendering um, is ridiculous uh, for so many reasons. So the first one is you mentioned the parking. Um, they actually took away some of the parking in this rendering. Um, so I don't really know exactly what the plan is in that particular place. Um, it looks beautiful. Look at all that. Gentlemen, look at all that outdoor <laughs> scenery. Again, I emphasize outdoor, outdoor. scenery. So we're going to be able to enjoy that five months out of the year yeah. and seven weeks out of the football season. It doesn't make a lot of sense to me. They have transportation issues. That's going to cost millions of dollars in itself to get people to and from the, the, the stadium. I mean, that's something that they should have tried to figure out a long time ago. Arlington Heights will still have its same problems in that regard. I think at the end of the day, what the Chicago Bears need to do and think about, which is I thought the original thought process was, is creating a stadium that also has a connected indoor area that is huge. So almost like, um, you know, I don't know, think of like uh, what the Mall of America maybe represents, okay. obviously. But think about a stadium, but then also think about a separate indoor area that provides retail, restaurants, you can put a movie theater in there, but something that I can go to for free anytime that I want to throughout the course of the year that is indoors and turn it into something that doesn't have to be Chicago Bears. Just get me in the door. If you look a little bit what what they've done at Wrigley Field, so Wrigley Field, they built, they bought a bunch of places out, but right next to where the parking lot used to be, they built a little field where you can play catch out in front, but then they built four restaurants, a small Cheval a place I think called like the 10th inning and then this bleachers place that is all indoors. So guess what? If the Cubs aren't even playing that day or they're not in town or it's the middle of January, I can go down there and I can give you my money and I can also shop your wares if I want to. And I think that is the biggest gap right now with this whole stadium situation. Of course, the indoor is going to be amazing. They want to host. You want to host a Super Bowl? Build something that's indoors that we can all go to and hang out at. Like me, the three of us can go and we could have some yes. a slab of ribs, <laughs> cheese curds on me, and what and, and hang out there, even if there isn't a football game going on. Yeah, I yeah. think that's the most important thing, bar none, which also probably means indoor parking or whatever that is. But until I see something like that. I mean, these renderings are just pablum for political tax. God only knows what the <laughs> Chicago Park District versus the Arlington Heights Commission right. and the mayor. And it's and all Lori. Yeah. Yep. Yep. Yeah. It's, so, it's so this, five years away, gentlemen. At so least. this is not what Joey wants, but they kept the, no. the columns. They kept the columns, right? They, put a, oh, they need good. like a sledding hill between the columns and then we all be, all be good. And Joey, I I think you nailed it. Like when you need something to do in January, because there's no football going on, you need to be inside somewhere. I, I, I think you nailed it. Yeah. Yeah. Until, until I see something like that, I don't understand really what you're improving upon other than, you know, to, you know, whatever, to be a cynic about it, lining the pockets um, of people that already have a ton of money um, by charging ticket prices that are exorbitant um, by making the parking a hundred dollars, which is what it, it's seventy five dollars at SoFi Stadium right now, um, and, and and I I think you could build a little more goodwill and a little bit more of a legacy landmark place if you created something that's three you know fifty two weeks out of the year you can come in, um, hang out in there, um, turn it into a tourist spot and, and host it like that. That's my yeah. that's where I land on that one. Yeah, it's already. I mean, they want to have Super Bowls in Chicago, and it's going to happen, and they're going to be domed and. We're going to be the last stadium that's uh, out in the air. Yeah. Watch yeah. Out. Where are we gonna Where are we gonna get some appetizers before Taylor Swift, gentlemen? <laughs> where, where? Show me in that graphic where me and <laughs> the three of us are getting some tapas Oops. and some margaritas. What? Get out the Madden pen, and I yeah, want you yeah, to circle yeah. me where the three of us are getting daiquiris before Taylor Swift. And Until I wish you I show me that. that. <laughs> I don't know what to tell you. <laughs> I wish I had a pen like that. That'd be great. But Ren wouldn't well, like yeah, that. Yeah, what was what was Cosby's pen? Not to get, you know, what was oh, Cosby's oh, pen back in the nope. day? You know, <laughs> yeah, nope. pen. You know the pen. I yeah, did know the pen. Cosby at the yeah. children's show back in the day. That was the name for that guy. I don't know. Well, I think that's yes. everybody. That's about <laughs> cute to, to get out of here. I think, but uh, uh, Joey, we appreciate it. Um, you joining us tonight. Um, I, I mean. 
we're looking forward to watching what the Bears do, obviously, with Caleb, uh, and just kind of seeing what happens with this. I mean, we know what we would do if we had a, a, a rookie quarterback. We'd probably bench him for at least a year and see what happens. But I think uh, I think you kind of like uh, changed my mind about whole, the whole situation and next year having more draft picks and that sort of thing and, and tempering your expectations a little low. You know, having that advice for all Chicago Bear fans to just temper your expectations and let's see what happens here. And that's the mindset you have to have going into this. Or you're going to be heartbroken. You're going to be upset about every little thing that happens. Oh, my heart's already been broken many <laughs> times over <laughs> for and, what a, a couple generations at this point. So I don't know what it true. was in 1990, the the Bears record over the Packers, but. Uh, you know, now we're up in that uh, that win versus loss scenario. It took a, it took about thirty five years, but it's been thirty five years of uh, you know Packer dominance. So, uh, oh, I walked yeah. right in. I'm right when I started loving football. Uh, Brett Favre uh, came around, so I'm I'm I've been I've yeah. been nightmares I've been of in, Halloween night in Chicago years ago in ninety ninety three. Rain, oh, dude, that's so funny, Ren. I have that burned into my mind. It was a Halloween night. Yep. I had a great costume that year. I think I was a three musketeer. It was raining like crazy. So it was cold. It was rainy. We couldn't get any trick or treating in. We got home early and we're like, you know what? At least the Chicago bears are on. And it was, I think it was a Monday night football <laughs> game. If I it remember was, correctly yeah. and yep. far absolutely just tore us a new one. And I learned yeah. the new version of horror on Halloween, on Halloween <laughs> night. That night. Yes. And it was Brett Favre. I remember that to this day uh, burned in my mind um, for eternity. Well, thank you for sharing your uh, childhood horror <laughs> stories with us. We appreciate that, Joey. It was so bad. <laughs> love it. I love it. I love it. Uh, awesome, Joey. I'm going to put this graphic up for you. Um, yep. It's uh, you're part of the sports talk Chicago, and then you still do um, beyond the big 10, but that'll uh, show up again this fall. I presume. And then, uh, yeah, I, I follow Joey at Joey sports guy on the X and most yeah. other platforms, right? Yeah. Joey, tell us, yeah. you know, what's, what's the dial in Chicago and uh, what, what app they can maybe find you on there. Yeah. So um, if you are in the Illinois area, forgive me a second, I'm going to have to pull this up really quick. Um, uh, Sports Talk Chicago runs across many radio affiliates throughout the great state of Illinois. I'll just read them off really quick. So if you get 98.3 The Life, WKAN, W55 The Ticket, ACTV, Jed TV, WJOB, Cities 92.9 Talk FM, or 101.1 Peoria Sports Radio. You can check out Sports Talk Chicago every single Thursday. Um, as you guys also mentioned, I do a lot of great work for Beyond the Big Ten. Um, so, yeah, please follow me at Joey Sports Guy. It isn't always just Chicago Sports Talk. Um, it will be a heavy dose of that. I'm not going to lie, but I do. Um, I have grown an affinity for Wisconsin Badgers football. Um, and I love talking sports in general, especially now that I'm back in the Midwest talking about Midwest, Midwest sports, um, on the regular. So, um, if you feel inclined, give me a follow, hang around with me for a couple of weeks, see how you feel. Um, gentlemen, thank you so much for having me back on the show. It's great to see you guys. Um, we're going to do, I can't wait till one day we're going to do an in-person and, uh, and look, uh, don't be a stranger. All right. I don't, I don't think bears Packers play each other until week 300. Um, this year, <laughs> right? It seems exactly. like that. Yeah, she, week, week she 11 comes late. at Chicago, yep. and then final week of the season. So, yeah, we'd we'd like to, you know, who knows? I, I get down to the Madtown area often. You're you're there, or you find yourself in Northeast Wisconsin. You are welcome at either of our places anytime. Uh, we'll we'd love to show you the area and and uh, look forward to to that uh, in person meeting down the road here, Joey. I can't wait, guys. Yeah, we'll uh, we'll trade some numbers in, in the message after the show. Thanks so much for having me back, guys. Um, thank yep. you to everyone that watched the show. This is a great show. I love these guys. Great Packers content all the time. I'm happy to be on, and I hope everyone continues to support. Thank you very much, Joey, and then take thank care. Thank you, Joey. Our pleasure. Bear Claw out. <laughs> Awesome. Hand? Arthritis? Yeah. Arthritis in the hand? Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I'm, I'm getting a little old in the tooth, no doubt.